what is reality is a really pretentious way to start a video. Let me back up a little bit. Paranoia Agent is a 2004 animated series by the late Satoshi Kon. The series focuses on two detectives as they investigate a string of attacks perpetrated by a boy wearing roller skates and wielding a twisted metal bat nicknamed Little Slugger by the media. And through its 13 episodes, the show explores what happens when an entire society of people become so miserable in their day-to-day -day lives that they seek any kind of escape that they can find. And what happens when Little Slugger comes to offer them that escape. Because with every attack that he commits, Little Slugger leaves his victim in a better position than they started in. Through the media and through word of mouth, Little Slugger's presence becomes felt all through Tokyo, and as his reputation grows, the amount of people who fall victim to him also grows, to the point where Little Slugger becomes almost like an urban legend, feared by some as a dangerous monster, but also admired by others because of the help that he seems to provide for people. Although the thing about Little Slugger is that despite all the things he's done, he was never even real in the first place. Enter Sikiku Sagi, a young character designer who stumbled into fame when she created the character Moromi, a floppy-eared pink dog who instantly became immensely popular with the public. However, with this success, Sikiku ran into a great deal of pressure, as now the company and Moromi's fans looked to her to create the next big hit. Sikiku then finds herself unable to produce anything with the same appeal as Moromi, and with an incoming deadline, she's left burnt out, constantly stressed and miserable, both at work and at home. That is, until she's walking home from work one evening, and she's attacked by Little Slugger, who injures her leg, leaving her unable to work and temporarily giving her a relief from that work. And as we find out near the end of the show, Tsukiku was never really attacked. Instead, she attacked herself and injured her leg out of a desire to escape her current situation. However, despite this, the news of the famous Moromi creator's injury spreads among the public, and as it spreads, more and more people begin to fall victim to Little Slugger as they begin to injure themselves in the hope of finding relief from their problems. A collective delusion descends on Tokyo, with people seeking an easy way to gain a quick relief from their lives. And I think that this shows that escapism is one of the core themes present in Paranoia Agent. It's become an integral part of modern day life. So much of modern life has become heavily routine, regimented, and most of all, mundane. Just an endless barrage of anxiety, work, and stress. And that's why we all need escape at some point. We all need fantasy to distract us from the dingy reality of life. Whether that's through media, role-playing, or escaping into nature, just to experience another world, untouched by the bustle of daily drudgery. We want an escape, and we'll look anywhere to find it. And Little Slugger, well, he represents the darker places that we will go to find that relief. Little Slugger, I think, is the personification of all the ways that we cope and escape from things in unhealthy ways. He's the quick release that people get from things like drinking or drugs or gambling or whatever other unhealthy things that we use. We can't escape from reality forever, but Little Slugger is the short-term relief that we get from drowning ourselves in distraction. But even so, that distraction will wear off, and it will ultimately only harm us. He's the kind of figure that can only really exist in a world that's so unpleasant to live in for so many people that those people will jump at any opportunity to get away from it all. And as soon as the idea of Little Slugger and the idea of a quick fix for their problems is put out by Sukiko, people embrace it immediately. And this feels kind of like a commentary of sorts on the world that in many places, but especially Japan, has become. A culture of intense work ethic that drives people to live unhappy lives. The only times that they can be happy 
is when they get away from it all. The show addresses the lives of multiple people in various different positions, and through that, it becomes relatable to a lot of the people watching. It goes from Tsukiku's aforementioned workplace stress, which is a struggle that many have to go through, to the bullying that a boy named Tyra endures at school, in which all of his friends leave him in the face of false rumours about him. And then it even touches on the intense stress of exams, which leads the boy in episode 9 to suicide, because he just can't take the feelings of failure anymore. And lastly, it goes into the isolation of growing old and having your world turn into a place that you can no longer recognize, just as Ikari does. And what this does is it allows us to relate to the characters and to their wish to escape reality. We can sympathize because most of us, no matter what age we are, have been through at least one struggle faced by the characters, and we can even view Little Slugger in a somewhat positive light, because he seems to genuinely help these people. But just like Little Slugger himself, the salvation he offers, well, it's a lie. Ikari's wife puts it bluntly in episode 11, when she says, You came here because you wanted to take advantage of me when I was vulnerable. You came here to kill me. You came here offering me a false salvation. But I can no longer be seduced. Dying is not an answer. And I will never wish for it again. <laughs> yes, now you know the real truth about humans. No matter how painful it may be, we can always face reality. But you don't understand that. Because you're not human. You simply hurt and kill those who are troubled and delude yourself that you're removing their burdens. How pretentious. All you can do is rejoice over your own actions. Your existence itself is a deception. Yes, deluding people with temporary peace of mind. You and Maromi are in fact one in the same. <gasps> and she's right. The delusion of Little Slugger is himself deluded into thinking that he's helping people, when, just like drink or drugs, the aid he offers is only a temporary distraction. If we look at the people who Little Slugger has attacked, very few of them actually ended up in a better position in the long term. Tsukiku has to return to the stress of her job eventually, and the split personality of Harumi Kono, it returns, and after that her alter ego Maria begins haunting her again. Nothing in the long term changes for any of these characters. The only times when Little Slugger actually permanently affects someone is when he offers that person an irreversible escape. At that point, Slugger turns from a metaphor for self-damaging behaviors into a metaphor for suicide. When one has become so caught up in the distractions and unhealthy escape that they can no longer face painful reality, well that's when suicide becomes a horribly appealing option. And by the end, Little Slugger rules a Tokyo of fantasy. He has been spread around by the media to the point where he has conquered the minds of many people, and the fact that so many are aware of him gives them the tragic opportunity to use him as an escape. But he's not the only unhealthy escape in Paranoia Agent. Moromi and Little Slugger are routinely compared to each other. Even though they may seem like opposites, Moromi, really, is just the other side of Little Slugger. They mirror each other. Despite being opposite, they're identical. Moromi is an adorable little doggo. She's bright and cuddly and comforting, and throughout the show, we see how she's caught on with the public. People buy merchandise of her, they make anime about her, they even give the little thing a parade all to herself. And that's because she acts as a distraction for people, a cute little thing to warm their hearts before they snap back to reality. And in moderation, Moromi is a great thing to have. This is shown early on when Tsukiku is reading all the abuse that she's receiving online, and Moromi comes to life to tell her that she's fine, 
and that she shouldn't worry about what these people think. And in this scene, Moromi helps Sakiku to overcome her worries and brightens her day. And that, I think, represents the positives of escape for people. A temporary comfort that we can fall back on when things become too much to handle. But then we fast forward to the end of the show, when many of the characters have immersed themselves in delusion and escape. Moromi now isn't a distraction anymore. She's something people rely on and obsess over. To the point where fans of Moromi commit actual crimes just to get their Moromi merch before it sells out. And there's a genuine upheaval when Moromi goes missing. At that point, the little doggo has ceased to be in a healthy escape. And Little Slugger and her have essentially become one and the same. They are both a fantasy, which people are willing to damage themselves to engage in. On a broader scale, Moromi represents when a hobby or an interest mutates and grows into an obsession, when it takes over a large portion of your life, and the interest in a fictional thing starts eating up significant amounts of your time and resources. This is again especially prevalent in Japan, with the wide-scale phenomenon of hikikomori, young people who entirely retreat from reality and choose to live their lives at home, never interacting with the outside world. Moromi is the indulgence in games or internet use or collecting or anything that is good in moderation, but that in a world in which people have to obsess over things just to feel happy becomes an incredibly insidious force. And throughout the show, we see how these forms of escape don't just distract our characters from reality, it entirely distorts reality around them. At the start, this is again in a milder way. An example is in episode 2, where the previously mentioned schoolboy Tyra uses the fantasy of him being a star of his school as a coping mechanism for his insecurity and his need to feel special among his peers. While it's still unhealthy, it's not crippling. However, as his classmates begin to suspect him of being Little Slugger, they begin to bully and ignore him, and that's when these comforting delusions begin to take over his mind. As his actual situation deteriorates, his fantasies deepen as he loses so much in the real world that he begins to clutch tighter and tighter to the world that he's built himself in his head. Because that's all that he's really got left. And the same occurs with Masami Hirakawa, the corrupt police officer who turns to burglary after the Yakuza threatens to burn down his house. He justifies his crimes in his own head by imagining himself as an old shonen style hero, courageously protecting his family from the Yakuza. And this is again a great example of how people can be so deluded in themselves that they go out and commit atrocities in the name of their twisted vision of themselves and of the world. Both these people throw reality in the rubbish bin, and they both end up unable to accept reality, and so they invite the Little Slugger to attack them leaving themselves worse off than before. But I think the most interesting example of this effect on a character is with the detective Ikari. Ikari is the main detective in charge of the Little Slugger case, and as an older man, he's watched as the Japan that he grew up in has changed from its traditional ways, with the immense cultural shifts of the 20th century that leave the man feeling lost in a world that seems to have no place for people like him. And all throughout the case, he struggles with how bizarre everything has become, how confusing and ugly the world seems. He just wants to return to those nostalgic memories of a better time, when bad guys were burglars ready and waiting to be whisked off to prison. But this new case has him so shaken, because he cannot see any possible motive for these murders and these assaults, and the world starts to become just a bit too much for him. And after being dismissed from the case, after the suicide of a little slugger copycat, Ikari only wants to return to that old world, to the point where his view of reality starts to fall apart, and he enters into a world that's just like the sugar-coated traditional paradise that he remembers. Kids play on the street, everyone knows everyone, and crime is as simple as a purse-snatching crook. 
It's a cardboard cutout imitation of the world Ikari remembers. But when he's desperate, it's enough to fool him. But after a while, this world begins to lose its appeal. Ikari remembers his wife and the people whom he cares for in the real world. And through that, he starts to recognize every bit of unreality in this old world that no longer exists. He's able to overcome his fantasy and begins to smash it apart, with the world crumbling into heaps of Moromi toys. Because this world is the same as Moromi. It's the same as Little Slugger. Just a harmful fantasy. And I know that this has all been quite depressing so far, but here's where I think that the show gives an optimistic edge to all of this. Because after Ikari throws aside his fantasy, and returns to the grimy and broken streets of modern Tokyo, the horrible, black, amorphous confusion of reality rears its head. I think that this smoke-like shape is the representation of the terror and helplessness one feels from acknowledging that they are in a bad situation, the kind that not even a comforting fantasy can shield you from, as shown by how Moromi is instantly destroyed by it. The grip of panic works its way into every nook and cranny of the city, snatching up everyone in its grasp. Every character who used Little Slugger as an escape is consumed by the realization. Ikari and Sakiko try to run away from it, but they can't outrun it. And that's when Tsukiku stops. She turns to face the horrible monster in front of her, and she accepts it. She acknowledges what happened to her, and understands the reality of her past and current situation. And it is at that moment that the panic fades away, and she can start to move past everything that's happened. And as she does that, everything, the collective stress that everyone has bottled up inside them, which has been released in a damaging, destructive explosion of emotion, it all falls apart. And now everyone in Tokyo can finally pick up the pieces of their lives, and at last, face reality. But at the end of the show, there's a time skip of two years. And we see that despite everything, nothing's really changed. People are still living in a fantasy. There's a cute new mascot to replace Moromi. And people are still focused on distractions. As the narrator says, this world is going to repeat the cycle of paranoia and escapism many, many more times. Because it's human nature to do so. This might seem like a depressing note to end on, but I think there's optimism. Because although society at large has forgotten the message that I think Paranoia Agent was trying to give, the protagonists have not, Ikari has not, and Tsukiku has not. And maybe, if the show resonates with enough people, then one by one, people start trying to fight back against their own Moromis, and their own little sucker. Change isn't going to happen all at once. It'll only happen person by person. And only then can things get a bit better for everyone. At least that's what I think this show was trying to say. But I don't really know. To conclude, Paranoia Agent, I feel, is a commentary on the nature of the world and how people cope with that world. We require fantasy to guard us from the worst parts of life and to inject hope and comfort in it. The show shows us what happens when an entire society becomes reliant on these escapes and how a world where people are afraid to face reality can never be sustainable. But it also shows us, through Ikari, his wife, and eventually Tsukiku herself, that we don't have to live in that fantasy and that once we stand and face the world, that's when we can find some peace in understanding reality. And from there, maybe we can improve that reality. <laughs>